I'm sure by now most of us know how the saying goes, the less of them you have, the more one's worth, and that's seasons of a TV show. Because while television has a huge advantage over movies by having a lot more time to flesh out their characters and their stories and get us more attached to the characters, it's also somewhat of a curse because you can either go on for so long that the audience start to get sick of you, or you can go on on top as one of the greatest shows of all time and end at an appropriate time. I understand why this may be tricky from a business standpoint because if people do love something, it seems easier just to keep giving them the same thing that they love. But eventually the show's formula may become dry and repetitive and the fans will just be wondering where it all went wrong. Or is it better to give fans what they want and keep feeding them the same content over and over again until it becomes repetitive and then all the magic that the show had at the beginning is instantly lost? And who knows, maybe it might be a great idea to keep finding new stories out there, but I do know one thing, and that's that Stranger Things definitely should have ended if one season as a miniseries. Now I know it may not sound like this later in the video, but I actually don't mind Stranger Things and I wouldn't call it an overall bad show. I actually really like its first season. It's a very cool and fun concept with some great character moments and a really interesting story that keeps you on the edge of your seat and it's very bingeable. It's got surprisingly pretty good child actors and has a really interesting story that's told very well over the course of 8 episodes and it all ends pretty well. I don't think I love the first season as much as a lot of other people do, but I can definitely understand why. Despite having a lot of supernatural horror elements, it's surprisingly a pretty wholesome show with some great character moments. I love its nod to a lot of Stephen King and Spielberg stuff, and I really like its mystery and how you clearly don't know anything that's happening. And it all pieces together in the final episode and ends off pretty well like I said. But you see, Stranger Things was a very popular, successful show that sold a lot of merchandise, so obviously there was a season 2. But then it became Netflix's most popular show, and now here we are. With the season 4 probably already out by the time this video gets uploaded, I think it's just time to go over the series and talk about where it all went wrong. I don't think I've ever seen a show that took only 3 years to lose absolutely everything that made it special. Like I mentioned, one of the things I enjoyed the most about the show was the characters. I thought Joyce was a pretty interesting sort of protagonist who was very sympathetic. You understand her and what she's going through because everyone thinks she's delusional when she's the one right all along. Still getting over her past trauma. Like most people, I thought Levin was a pretty sweet and interesting character and all the other kids were pretty nice as well. I surprisingly really liked Hopper's character because he was a nice subversion to what we come to expect from these kind of stories. Instead of being a character who doesn't believe anything that's going on until the climax where he's now useful, he actually believes everything from the very beginning and actually figures a lot of things out and has a pretty heartbreaking, albeit generic, backstory. But I say for the most part that season 1 ended on a pretty satisfying note. I think the little tease that it has at the end is fine. Even the main villain who's behind everything dies at the end. It was a pretty nice, entertaining love letter to 80s horror media that I did not need any more of. It had a lot of nice subversions here and there and some pretty cool moments and some pretty wholesome scenes like I said, but nothing about it was really all that special enough to warrant a second and third season. But of course, everyone in the world thought otherwise and before you know it... So in case you don't already know, the first season of Stranger Things is about a boy named Will who goes missing in an alternate dimension called the Upside Down. And it's all because this girl with superpowers named Eleven touched a monster and opened a gate to this dimension, and then his friends, his brother, and his mom all have to go looking for him along with the chief of police. Like I said, it's a relatively simple story with a pretty simple twist and some really great characters and nice nods to 80s movies. Will gets found in the end, and the gate gets closed, and the lab gets shut down, and Eleven ends up sacrificing herself to defeat the monster and mysteriously disappearing. Unlike the third one, it at least feels like season 2 actually has some pretty decent ideas hidden under all the mediocrity. You see, a lot of the tension is already taken away when we already know about the upside down and everything that the first season kept under wraps, so it kind of makes it hard for us to learn anything new, and that's why I like this new villain because you really don't understand what's going on with Will, and I like that. Will's basically being possessed by a creature known as the Mind Flayer that operates in a hive mind and wants to take over Hawkins. You see, while the Mind Flayer and all of that is a pretty cool story and all, it's not cool enough to carry 9 50 minute episodes and I feel like the writers knew this. Nancy and Jonathan have this whole cell plot where they basically just do nothing but just hang around and it's basically just an excuse for the two to fall in love. Which I thought they already did by the last season, but I guess not. They briefly go to this journalist guy's house in hopes of taking down the lab, but really all they do is just make out there. I don't even remember what they did after that. Mike, who was the main one of the kids from the last season, was just an asshole this entire season. He's mad that his friends want to be friends with this one girl who he thinks is trying to replace Eleven even though she didn't even do anything wrong to him. 
And there are multiple scenes earlier on that suggest that he acts this way because he misses 11, and that's understandable, but the thing is, he never apologizes for all the shitty things he does throughout the season. Towards the end of the season, there's a perfect opportunity where Mike could have just simply apologized for the way he acted when Max realizes the truth. But instead of apologizing for how horribly he treated her, he just says this and said, And just because you know the truth, it doesn't mean you're in our party. You do know that, right? And throughout the rest of the season, he's just there with the other characters while everything's going on with Will. And yeah, while well, I already mentioned the Will subplot, I will say the scene at the lab was pretty cool. Although this movie does the alien thing where the main monster from the last season is a bunch of smaller monsters for some reason. Oh yeah, and Hopper, the chief of police from the last season, is here, I guess. He does have a pretty sweet father-daughter relationship with Eleven, which are one of the few moments in the season that I actually say I really liked. I don't mind the argument scene between the two of them because you can understand both of their perspectives and they end up apologizing for how terrible they treated each other in the end in a pretty wholesome scene. It's almost like if you write characters like actual human beings you can get behind how shitty they act in some episodes. Being unlikable isn't the entire problem, being unreasonably unlikable is. But yeah, Hopper is just so much more boring this season. He doesn't even have his own interesting storyline or anything to work with other than Eleven. He's just there with the other characters when all the stuff with Will is happening. As for the kids, they added this new girl named Max and she's very not not annoying. It's not even the fact that I hate her character. It's honestly just the exact opposite that I just couldn't really find anything to be attached to with this character. She's the new kid in town that has no idea what's going on and everyone thinks she's super cool. Oh yeah, and the kid with the hat whose name started with like a D, I, I, I really don't know. He adopts and gets attached to a strange creature he finds rolling around in his trash who turns out to be a Demogorgon, and for some reason doesn't tell his friends about it until it almost kills them. It's a very weird subplot, but I'll take it over the much, much worse Eleven storyline. Oh my god, there are so many characters in this show. They clearly didn't want Eleven to show up earlier with the rest of the characters because she can just close the gate and end it all that easily. So they had to have some way to keep her out of the main story and the way that they did it was just so, and I mean so awful. So she ends up meeting her mom and she encourages her to go find the other numbers and Eleven ends up joining the Suicide Squad. Apparently they thought the storyline was so good that they decided to dedicate an entire episode centered just around Eleven and these new characters. It's even worse that they did it right in the middle of the season finale. Oh yeah and these characters all suck anyways, I don't even remember any of their names. This episode just wants to be really cool so badly and it just fails and it's honestly kind of funny. I was going to try to show some examples of how cringy the dialogue is but honestly I don't want to rewatch this episode. And they just took away everything that made Eleven interesting and I mean everything. And then she just shows up right at the end and just to end the whole conflict because they were running out of ways to do that. Oh yeah and Mike gets pretty much everything that he wants and never apologizes for being an asshole to everyone over Eleven. I don't really have much else to say about this season, it was pretty boring and a huge step down from the first one. It does that weird thing that a lot of sequels released around that time does where it just basically does the same thing as the first one but slightly different. I still really like the main story with the mind flayer and all that but they don't dedicate too much screen time to that because they have to make room for a lot of filler stuff with characters I don't care about anymore. I will say if there's one good thing to come out of the season is that the interaction between Steve and the other kids are surprisingly really wholesome and fun. And while I will say that this season in terms of quality is much better than the next one, it's honestly kind of worse because of how much more forgettable it is. I'm struggling to remember what even happened in some of these episodes. Also, this is just a tiny nitpick, but I'm wondering if they ever even explained how the other gates to the Upside Down was formed. Like, I really don't remember. <laughs> I really don't know where to begin with the third season. It's really like such a mess. As bad as the last season was, I'll at least give it some credit that it was able to keep some sense of mystery that the first season had. We weren't exactly sure who we could trust and we didn't understand the mind flare and what it was doing to Will exactly. And while it's very obvious that season two was very rushed and the story wasn't big enough to fit nine episodes, I'll at least give it some credit that they at least tried to keep some sense of suspense and mystery and leave us in the dark a lot of the time. Now just to emphasize this, the first season didn't even show us entirely what happened with Eleven and the Upside Down until later on in the series. The very first episode of the show was very ominous and it purposely avoided showing you what happened to Will. Because a good bingeable series is supposed to keep you on edge in the dark for a lot of the time because it wants you to keep watching to see what happens to Will and what exactly is going on. 
and the world and the rules and how everything works was relatively new to us so we were able to be excited and surprised when strange things started to happen because we didn't understand it at first. There's a scene in season 1 where they purposely avoid showing Eleven using her powers so that way it could be an interesting reveal later on. There are times where we're wondering if things we're seeing are even real and certain characters are just simply delusional. I mean, even Hopper was too. We don't even know if we can trust Eleven or if she has something to do with Will's disappearance. The main point I'm trying to make is season 1 and to an extent season 2 heavily relies on us not knowing anything that's going on and that's what makes it such a great bingeable series and that's what made us fall in love with these characters in the first place. Because like them, we want to know what's happening to Will. Can you guys guess where I'm going with this? You see, season 3 of Stranger Things opens up with evil Russians attempting to open a gate to the Upside Down. And just in case you weren't able to tell that these guys were evil, one of the guys chokes out the other one just to show that these guys are indeed not very nice. And just in case these guys speaking in Russian wasn't a big enough indicator that these guys are Russian, they play a Russian song in the background over a shot of the Russian flag just so that the audience definitely knows for sure that these guys are indeed Russians who are trying to open the gate. While gathering footage, I literally forgot that they show the Mind Flayer possessing a bunch of rats. Yeah, they really just reuse the same villain from the last season. And just in case you didn't automatically make the connection, they literally show the Mind Flayer Dust Cloud thing from the last season possessing Will in a flashback, just so people can make the connection that the Mind Flayer is indeed back and possessing dead rats. And there's literally a shot where we see a guy walking in their secret Russian facility, and while they don't show us what exactly they're all working on, it doesn't take a genius to make a connection from the first 5 minutes of the goddamn episode. And the episode literally ends with Max's brother Billy being possessed by the Mind Flayer. Like, I'm not the only one that sees the problem here, right? Pretty much the rest of the season is the characters trying to figure out what the audience knows just from watching the first episode. Not only is this a problem because it takes away what made the show so much from the binge watch in the first place, but it also is a huge problem because so much, and I mean so much time, is wasted into letting the characters know what's going on. It takes 4 episodes for the main group of kids to even realize something strange is going on, and by then they still haven't figured out that Billy is infected by the Mind Flayer. They have this whole elaborate plan to try to see if Billy's infected or not, and sure enough, he is indeed infected. When you're watching a show, you want to feel interested and invested into it, but it really takes a lot of your investment away when you already know what's happening, and you're just watching characters figure out what's happening, annoying characters at that. A lot of season 5 is centered around Mike and Eleven's relationship, and I just really didn't care. Mike is still very annoying in this season, and Eleven isn't much better. She's just used as a weapon this season to just fight off the monster whenever it's convenient. They somehow managed to suck all the character out of her and she just felt like a plot device for the majority of the season. And you know, for a show about kids fighting monsters, it's pretty surprising that the monster storyline isn't even all that important since so much of this story focuses on evil Russians and I really just don't care. Evil Russians aren't even that interesting, the ones in this are just so over the top and cartoonish. And even though they just reuse the same monster from the last season, or at least give it that it's somewhat fun at first. Like the idea of the Mind Flayer possessing multiple people all over town sounds pretty cool on paper, but the way they turn into a weird melted spider monster thing which is kind of… I don't even know. I will say that the hospital fight was probably the best action scene in the entire season. Also Will went from being one of the main characters in the show to being kind of irrelevant this season. He's kind of pissed that his friends won't play D&D anymore because they're too busy talking to girls and whatnot. And look, acting has never been this show's strong suit even from season 1, but goddamn, this argument scene was just so adorable. And obviously he doesn't either and I don't blame him. You're destroying everything and for what? So you could swap spit with some stupid girl? Elle's not stupid. It's not my fault you don't like girls. And after that, he's just reduced to being a background character. I forgot he was there for most of the season. Oh yeah, speaking of characters, this season sure does have a lot of them, even worse than season 3 because a lot of these characters aren't really given much to do otherwise. It's even worse because none of these characters ever really die or feel like they're being put in any real danger. Look, I can believe the monsters, the alternate dimensions, and the superpowers, and I know the show is pretty ridiculous in concept, but you cannot tell me that a bunch of kids, including a 10 year old, were able to sneak in and out of a secret Russian base as easily as they were. And I'm sorry, this whole war game style Russian based storyline just felt so out of place from everything we've seen from the show. There's a lot of really unfunny humor and especially with this annoying little girl character. And with the exception of her, it's mostly carried by the characters not being entirely awful, but it still didn't make it any less annoying. This is much more of a nitpick and not a serious criticism, but I don't really like how this show looks more modern compared to how season 1 and season 2 were shot. But the 80s nostalgia aspect is very much ramped up here. The characters have this incredibly forced argument about new coke. 
original is the classic, no question about it. But the remake? There's this new character in this that's literally just the Terminator and they're not even trying to hide it. There's an okay little reference where the characters have to hide out in a movie theater that's playing Back to the Future, but then for some reason they force an entire conversation where the characters talk about how weird the movie was. But of course, I can't forget the infamous scene where two characters sing the entire verse of the never-ending story theme song, right in the middle of a pretty climactic finale. I really wish I was making this up. This may be surprising, but I actually do have a heart, and in any other context and probably a much better show, this scene would have been really cute, but it just really did not fit here. And the strangest thing is, I can't really tell if this scene is supposed to be cute or comedic. Look, I've tried to avoid talking about this, but I think it's finally time I talk about the subplot that truly sums up everything I hate about this season. So Hopper and Joyce have this storyline where they're trying to figure out what the Russians are doing in Hawkins and all that stuff. But something happened to both of these characters that they become just so unlikable and extremely annoying. Ironically in a childish way, Hopper is just such an overly aggressive asshole this season. And he was just not at all like this in season 1. He acts incredibly immature over Mike and Elle spending time together. He tries to ask Joyce out on a date and she awkwardly replies yes and Trish she doesn't come and then spends the rest of the season whining about it. And I mean, these two 40-something year olds just whine and yell at each other the entire season. And he has such a short temper this season to the point where I thought he was secretly possessed by the Mind Flayer or something. But no, he's just a massive immature asshole. And Joyce isn't really all that less annoying this season. Going from being a character that I really empathize with in season 1 and 2, in this season her entire storyline kicks off because she's concerned that magnets are falling off her fridge. And no, she is so obsessed with finding out what's happening to her magnets that she actually starts to sound like a crazy person. When in season 1 and 2, her whole point was that she wasn't actually crazy, but everyone thought she was. Ask him what he's doing that's making my magnets fall off my damn fridge! And basically throughout the season, they're trying to uncover the great Russian mystery that we already know about based on the first five episodes. And this whole storyline all throughout was just so annoying that it started to feel like a parody of itself. It's like the writers who wrote this season just watched season 1 and 2 and decided to make a spoof of that. They kidnap this Russian scientist dude, and Hopper loses his shit multiple, and I mean multiple different times. All while Joyce keeps arguing with him about the magnets and the date and whatnot. And the fact that we already know the answer to the characters' questions, and we're just watching these characters be annoying for multiple different episodes. There's one scene where I've watched it at least four different times to try to figure out this scene's supposed to be funny or serious. I don't know who you are, if you're some glorified secretary or what but if you don't want to lose your job here's what's gonna happen when i hang up you're gonna get up off your ass and you're gonna go find owen and tell him what's going on oh yeah and then out of absolutely nowhere joyce and hopper just decide to go on a date pretending like they didn't just argue with each other for like the last few episodes there's also one scene that's supposed to be really dramatic where the characters finally figure out what the russians are planning it's supposed to be really crazy that we're finally now putting it together that the Russians are trying to open the gate, when not only have we figured that out from the very beginning, but we literally see another group of characters also figured that out a few episodes earlier. I guess I should talk about Max's older brother Billy, who is in season 2 but he doesn't really do much other than the fact that he's an overly cartoonish racist bully. He's just a character that's meant to be an obstacle so that Max can have a moment where she finally stands up to him. And then season 3 he's possessed by the monster the entire season so we barely really get to see his actual character. I guess they do give him a very rushed and incredibly corny backstory but that's enough to make me care for him when he dies. His character was just a huge waste of potential. There's also a really weird subplot where he hits on Mike's mom. And it's not just him like she's also into him too. And she actually considers leaving her family for someone who's at least 20 years younger than her. So that's something. I know some people watching this might get the impression that I think this is like the worst show ever. So before I wrap this up, I want to talk about someone who's easily my favorite character in the entire show, which is Steve. He starts off as a very typical high school popular guy. He's popular, he's cool, and he's athletic and picks on the quiet sensitive kids. Usually in these type of stories, the quiet sensitive kid would overpower the popular kid and you would just go from there. And yeah, that does kind of end up happening, but with a really nice twist. You see, this time, Steve actually realizes how much of an asshole he's been and tries to apologize to Nancy and Jonathan and make things right and even gets to become a hero when he helps them fight the Demogorgon at the end. The audience's expectations are subverted as he's actually a pretty cool guy at the end. In season 2, things start to get a little rough for him as he and Nancy break up. 
I'm sorry, I really cannot move on without acknowledging how awful the acting is in this scene. You know, like, like, like we didn't, like we didn't kill Barb. Like, like, it's great. Like, we're in love and uh, we're partying. Yeah, let's party, huh? Party, we're partying. He even starts to become a little less popular with Billy around. He then starts to hang out with Dustin and the rest of the group. And it's clear he cares about them because they're the only ones who really think he's cool. His friendship with the kids even lets him get over his relationship with Nancy. In season 3, he realizes how miserable his life is now that he's out of high school. He's still a very nice older brother to the kids, but he's starting to realize that he's kind of peaked in high school. And then throughout season 3, he's trying to prove that he's not until he's eventually hit with the inevitable truth. It just baffles me. Everything that people tell you is important. Everything that people say you should care about, it's all just... Uh... <laughs> Bullshit. Steve then starts to fall in love with his co-worker Robin when he finally confesses his feelings to her. It's revealed that she's actually a lesbian, but Steve is actually very supportive of her and they have this really wholesome talk. It's probably one of the few character interactions in season 3 that I actually thought was really sweet. At the end of season 3, they eventually have to close the gate and Hopper apparently dies. And then Eleven finally reads the letter that Hopper wrote for him and Will and his family end up moving away and the kids all go their separate ways. And you know what, if this season was the last season of Stranger Things and they decided to end it at 3, I honestly would have given not only this season, but probably the show a bit more credit. I actually really like this season's theme of growing up and I wish it was handled much better. Because the ending of the season is honestly a pretty perfect ending for the series overall. I actually really like Hopper's speech about how he's hidden his feelings because the last time he was open with his feelings was also when he lost his daughter and he didn't want that to happen again. Even though I still really don't like this season and I stopped caring about these characters, I really like these last 5 minutes. It would have been pretty bold of Netflix to end it right there. Hopper is alive somehow and we're getting at least 2-3 to three more seasons of this. Because Netflix is dying and of course they need to milk their biggest cash cow even more. If this video does well, I'll definitely give the new season its own separate video to talk about. This show isn't all that bad though. It's got its moments both really great and both really terrible. And I still stand by that while flawed, the first season of the show is pretty good. But man, I gotta say, I've never gotten so tired of a show in just three seasons. And while the show could have been much worse, it could have been much better too. It's a show that has a lot of really great ideas on paper, but was just rushed together to keep the viewers interested for as long as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video was much longer than I expected it to be, because I really underestimated how much I had to say about this show. Like, subscribe, and don't smoke weed in the Upside Down, and I will see you guys all next time.